Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make a detailed video about goldfish developmental evolutionary biology. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evo devo. In the video so far, we have explained the developmental stages from fertilization to hatching using this developmental stage table. This table of developmental stages defined and describes the individual stage using some staging indexes. The staging index is a trait that anyone can easily understand and is an index that serves as a guideline for clearly distinguished stages of embryonic development. By using this developmental stage table or staging indexes, researchers can discuss with each other the stages of goldfish embryos used in their experiment. In other words, it can be said that there is a developmental stage table to establish such communication. Similarly, it would be useful to have a table like this that describes the developmental stages after hatching. So, in 2015 and 2019, we created a such developmental staging table for goldfish. So, in this video, I will proceed with an explanation based on such a table used in these papers. But before that, let me briefly explain the differences between embryo larvae juveniles and adults. The definition of these developmental periods and stages is due to human visual perception. So, of course, we separate embryos, larvae, and juveniles based on the state of their trait, which are visible and easy to understand. Differences between embryos and larvae are separated before and after hatching. I talked about this point in my previous video. Then, what distinguishes between larvae, juveniles, and adults? The difference between adults and juveniles can be easily defined. This is because if we define an individual that can produce the next generation as an adult fish, the story becomes very simple. In other words, a goldfish is classified as a juvenile. It possesses the same organ as an adult but has not yet reached sexual maturation. Now before we examine the detailed developmental stages, I would like to provide a brief explanation more. During embryonic development, the goldfish embryos rely on yolk reserves for nutrition. However, after hatching, goldfish must obtain food from external sources as they grow toward adults. Therefore, the developmental stage tables are separated into those for embryonic and post-embryonic stages. The table describing the pre-hatching stage is called the embryonic staging table, while the one describing post-hatching growth is referred as the post-embryonic staging table. Now, let us examine the post-embryonic stage of goldfish. Protruding mouth stage. As mentioned in the previous video, this stage also appears in the embryonic staging table. This is because depending on the state of embryo, the individual may still be enclosed within the egg membrane at this stage. However, once it breaks through the egg membranes and emerged, it is then considered a larva. Approximately 3 to 4 days post fertilization, the individual takes on this appearance. It is about 5 mm in size. The swim bladder is beginning to form, but it does not yet contain any air. Also, please focus on this part of the caudal fin, which appears somewhat white. This area is where the caudal fin skeleton are forming. At this stage, cells that do not produce black pigments are gathering here. Posterior swim bladder stage. At this stage, you can observe air inside the swim bladder. This development allows the larva to float effectively. This appearance typically occurs around 5 to 8 days post fertilization. The individual is around 5 to 6 mm in size. Additionally, the name of this stage includes the term posterior, indicating that the posterior swim bladder has developed. 
Goldfish have two swimming bladders, anterior and posterior. The posterior one inflates first. The previously noted white area on the caudal fin is becoming increasingly prominent. This stage of larvae retains yolk. Now let us examine an individual from the later part of this stage. You can clearly see that the yolk was decreased significantly. Furthermore, you can observe digested artemia and undigested artemia eggs within the abdomen. This indicates that around the PSB stage, the larvae start actively swimming and feeding. Caudal fin ray stage. After a day or two from the previous stage, it will be called caudal fin ray stage. This is a stage where the fin rays of caudal fin appear. Seven days after fertilization, body length is around 6 mm. The knot cord at the base of this caudal fin is slightly bent. And if you look closely, you can see something like a transparent streak at the base of the caudal fin. These are fin rays in the process of being formed. A total of four fin rays can be seen from this individual. So we can use this number of visible criteria to further subdivide the individuals at this stage. For example, this goldfish individual can be classified as a CR4 based on the visible fin ray count. Also like this, it's a bit uh, big individual, and the fin rays of the caudal fin will increase. And as the number of fin rays on the caudal fin increases, the shape of the caudal fin also changes. For the caudal fin stage, you can see that this part of the caudal fin of this individual goldfish is recessed compared to other parts. This is a state where the tail fin looks like a fork when viewed from the lateral side. I will call this state the fork the caudal fin stage. Approximately 13 days after fertilization, the standard length is about 7 mm. Anterior swim bladder stage. When the growth progress is a little further from the previous stage, the anterior swim bladder appears. Because of this feature, this stage is called an anterior swim bladder stage. About 13 to 14 days after fertilization, the total length increases little more than 7 mm. The timing of the fork-like caudal fin appearing earlier and the anterior swim bladder appear almost the same time. However, from our observation result, we have confirmed that the order of appearance of these staging indexes is not reversed. From this stage, you can start to see that the membrane on the dorsal side and behind the cloaca are whitish. Later on, these parts appear as the primordia of the dorsal fin and anal fin. Dorsal fin ray stage. 18 to 20 days after fertilization, body length will be about 7.5 mm to 8 mm. Then the white area on the dorsal side began to change. Fin rays appear in this part. On the other hand, the part behind this cloaca is whiter than the rest, but there are no uh, fin rays. In goldfish, the dorsal fin appears first and the anal fin appears next. About 22 to 23 days after fertilization, the body length will exceed 8 mm. In the previous developmental stage, a white area was observed behind the cloaca. In this current stage, a transparent line-like structures can be seen in that the same area. They are the fin rays of the anal fin. At this point, you will be able to see obvious change in other part of the body which are different from the larvae you have seen so far. First is the size of the swim bladder. Up until now, posterior swim bladder was larger, but at this stage, the anterior swim bladder looks bigger. Multiple bamboo joint-like structures are clearly visible on the fin rays of the dorsal and the caudal fins. After another day, 27 to 28 days after fertilization, the body length will be around 9 mm in the standard length. From around here, the primordium of the pelvic fin, that is the protruding part that becomes the origin of the pelvic fin, becomes visible. The stage where the edge of the biology that forms the base of the pelvic fin becomes a thin membrane is called the pelvic fin bud. 
Unlike the dorsal and caudal fins, the pelvic fins that appear on the both sides of the body differ greatly in the timing of their appearance. Pelvic fin ray stage. After breeding for about 30 days after fertilization, the standard length becomes about 11 mm. When you come this far, you can see that the fin folds are steadily disappearing from the body. Especially this appearance of the fin fold around here is very remarkable. However, you can see that the fin fold still remains in the anterior side of cloaca. By the way, upon reaching this stage, the body will almost approach the adult fish. All that remains is to wait for the remaining fin fold to disappear. Juvenile stage. In the juvenile stage, as the developmental progress is beyond the larval stage, the fin fold is completely absent. On the size of body, you can clearly observe the appearance of scales. Therefore, as mentioned previously, the presence of the scales and the absence of fin fold distinguish juveniles from larvae. This stage is typically reach around 25 to 29 days post fertilization when body lengths are approximately 17 mm. However, since scale development varied by size, we decided to subdivide this stage further into two substages. Incompletely scaled juvenile substage. At this stage, most of the sides of the body are covered with scales, but the back of the head is not covered with scales. If you use this alizarin red staining solution, you can see that the scales and the fin rays are dyed red. And you can see that this part is not red. At this time, it looks as close as possible to adult fish, so you can decide that it is a juvenile stage. However, there is a difference in scale distribution compared to the more advanced juvenile stage. Therefore, I will refer to this juvenile substage as the incomplete scaled juvenile substage. In this substage, the scales are not fully formed. At this stage, characteristic fin rays appear in this part of the dorsal and anal fins. You can see that this fin is like a very hard thorn, unlike others. And if you go one step further, the whole body will be completely covered with scales like this. In this state, it is certainly not much differ from adult fish. From this substage onwards, not only black and silver pigments, but also red pigments will come out strongly, and it becomes an adult goldfish like we often see. Coloration I would like to briefly explain the colors and the growth stages here. There are clear differences in the color between adult and juvenile fish. And the color changes rapidly starting from the larval stage. In that case, it may be possible to divide the larval juvenile and adult stage more precisely by the state of the color. However, I have tried to avoid using color information in this developmental staging table. The reason for this is that we thought that color is not suitable as an indicator of different stages because it is easily affected by food and light environment. Perhaps fancier and breeder who want to raise beautifully colored goldfish use colors as some kind of criterion. So breeders and fancier use terms like aoko or kroko based on color. These color-based terms are quite useful for identifying the developmental status of late larva and juveniles. On the other hand, our purpose is to study development and morphological evolution. For our purposes, the indexes should be applicable to any kind of the goldfish even under experimental conditions. So when we created this developmental staging table, we focused on using morphological information instead of using colors. By doing so, it will be possible to discuss the stages of development and growth, even if processing such as fixation and staining that arises color information is performed in later experiment. After one year, body size reaches 5 cm or more. 
By the time it reaches this point, it is already an adult fish. The color of this individual is bright, but depending on the individual, there are also individuals with light colors. There are variations in color. That's why I didn't use color for the staging index. Mature males can reproduce sperm and females can produce eggs. If you keep them well for two years and three years, they will continue to lay eggs during the spawning season. Before concluding this video, let's briefly review what we've covered. In this video, we outlined the days on which staging index typically appears. However, these are general guidelines. In particular, for the foster embryonic stages, the timing of these staging indexes depends heavily on environmental factors. The influence of environmental conditions on the developmental process is a fascinating topic in EvoDevo study. An in-depth discussion on this phenomenon will be covered in a future video. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.